Thanks for joining us on the final leg of our journey from Indiana to Seattle and back again. If you've been with us since the beginning of our journey, thank you so much for your support. And if you're just joining us, consider subscribing and check out some of the earlier videos. We'd love to read your comments too. Since we're new to this, we know we have a lot to learn. Even though this journey's coming to an end, we've taken a couple other small trips since then and are in the planning stage for a few more. We've also made a new addition to our Heckin' Back family. Tim is calling it Heckin' Aw, and we'll be introducing that in the next video. Once we get camp packed up, we'll make our way through Lewis and Clark National Forest and then across the beautiful state of Montana. After we cross over into North Dakota, we'll stop for the night and visit Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Then in the morning, we'll continue our long drive home, but not before taking a self-guided tour of the Enchanted Highway. This is as good a day as any To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin As we were coming out of the forest, Tim saw some movement over to the left and we grabbed a camera. Unfortunately, not one with zoom, but we were still able to get some pretty good pictures of this deer and her fawn. After a couple hours on forest and county roads, we made it back out to State Highway 89. Then we had to decide whether to head south down to Interstate 90 or continue to the east on state highways. We opted for the state highways, even though they were two lanes the whole way. The speed limit in Montana, even on these two lane highways, is often 75, 80, um, definitely 65 at a minimum. So it really wasn't any slower, I don't think, to stay on the state highways and they were probably a lot more scenic. I love to stop and take pictures of old barns and homesteads while we're driving. I love imagining the history, the people who lived here, what life was like. I'm always curious about the story behind the remains. After about seven, eight hours of driving, we crossed into North Dakota and the Little Missouri National Grasslands. Our last stop of the day was Theodore Roosevelt National Park. We had opted to visit the North Unit because there was a lot of road construction going on in the South Unit. 
The south unit is also much more visited because of how close it is to interstate. the day in Dickinson, North Dakota at Fat Fish Brewing Company, where we had this for dinner, bacon, mac and cheese, nachos. So bacon, mac and cheese on top of nacho cheese Doritos. Probably the most unhealthiest thing we had during the whole trip. In the morning, we got up bright and early and jumped on the highway with the intention of just putting our heads down and pushing through the long drive home. But then we saw this. Now, how do you not stop to see what this is? So this led us on to the Enchanted Highway, which is a series of sculptures created by metal sculptor and retired school teacher Gary Graff to pull people down to his small town of Regent. Tim and I almost were using the word lure, that it's kind of luring people down there, but that had a negative tone to it. Tim and I were joking as we were driving that this would be a perfect plot of luring tourists down to something in a horror movie. When you stop at the first one, it gives you information about an app you can download on your phone. So we downloaded the app and then took the self-guided tour. And the app explains at each stop um, the meaning and like history and everything behind each sculpture. So then after that, we did just put our heads down and drive. Um, so across the rest of North Dakota, a little part of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana. We learned so much on this trip, both about what we want to do in the future and what we don't want to do. We definitely want to do more traveling and exploring and longer trips like this. We drove over 5,000 miles on this trip. But we had really already known that even before we took this trip. One of the things we did learn, though, is that we would like to focus on smaller areas. I mean, this was really a round trip tour across the country. And we would rather spend like a week in one place exploring that place, driving back roads, camping, um, you know, checking out a few breweries here and there that kind of thing, as opposed to driving so many miles every single day. Really, though, if I think about it, it's not even the miles. It's just that we're getting only getting to, like, skim the surface. Instead of driving through North Dakota in one day, we would love to spend a week in North Dakota exploring or Montana or Wyoming. We don't actually mind the driving. 
we just want to have the time to explore and really get off road and do more of that overlanding kind of experience. We also learned that it's probably time for us to retire our rooftop tent. Not that there's anything wrong with the rooftop tent, but just for our age and our physical capabilities, it's probably time to move to something a little bit easier to set up and put away. Something that doesn't require quite as much climbing around at a higher level. We have made a new purchase to move us in that direction, and we'll be introducing that in our next video. This trip had its up and ups and downs, definitely. Um, there was some sorrow. We lost our friend while we were on this trip and were hurrying back for her memorial service. Tim's sister had come down ill while we were on the trip, and we actually lost her a couple weeks after returning. Of course, there was joy as well, though. The whole motivation for the trip was attending the wedding of two people who we love very much and Tim officiating that wedding. We saw so many beautiful places, wild places, and met some really interesting people. A while after we returned, Tim saw this on Etsy and decided to order one for us. He knows I'm a kid at heart and I love these kind of things. We realized though rather quickly that of course this only covers national parks. On our trip we had visited six national parks and we live right outside the Indiana Dunes. So we went ahead and counted that one too. But it doesn't account for all the national monuments and national forests and things like that that we had visited as well. So now we're looking for something else to help keep track of those things also. We can't wait to get back out there and add more trees to our plaque. Thanks again for joining us on our adventure. We can't thank you enough for watching our videos. If you have suggestions of places we should go, we would love to hear about them. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights